All right, welcome everyone to our first tech talk here with Be Connect CTO and co-founder Nikki Diamonds. How are you doing, Nick? Doing good. How are you, Michael? Or can I call you Mike? Mike Memblem. I don't know. Everyone in chat is like, "Oh, there's Memblem." I'm like, "Please, I'm Michael now. I've evolved." Michael, like I, it. I'm Michael from Beat Connect now. Um, how's it going, Kyle? How's it going, Um uh, Yeah, today we're just gonna chat. We're gonna figure out exactly what Nick eats for breakfast, and then we're gonna end stream, and that's about it that we want to know today. Um, but first things first, Nick. Uh, please introduce yourself and uh, how you're involved with Beat Connect. Oh man. All right. What's up guys? Nikki Diamonds, AKA my real name IRL is uh, Nick Larash. I'm in cold Canada, Montreal. Uh, Co-founded BeConnect with my my spreadsheet wizard ninja partner, uh, Alex Turbid, uh, what, like three years ago, beginning of the pandemic. And we are still going strong, my friend, stronger than ever. So it's a journey and I'll, I'll talk about the whole the whole thing, man. Nice. We've got uh, got some good faces. We've got some Quebec representation in the chat. We got Quebec City in the chat with Yankee. Yes. Um, yeah. So you're located in Montreal, correct? Or just outside of Montreal? Yes. Somewhere around there. Nice. No, I just, I'm in the ghetto. I'm in a, in a little part called Nongay, which is just after the bridge. Like, you know, like you got city life where like, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's like, you know, whatever. Going to Cross Oceaga the bridge and you're just like, wow, you <laughs> are somewhere else. There? <laughs> That's funny. Um, nice. So yeah, I guess the first thing we want to talk about is uh, how did you get into this? How did you get into figuring out that you wanted to work with technology and music production? Oh, man. Okay. So the, the, the journey started a long time ago, right? So I started to code when I was like, eight years old, I learned on QBasic. Uh, it's like this super old like stuff and uh there was a game those like these gorillas that could throw like bananas at each other and i was like man i want to learn how to do this <laughs> this was back when like all our computers had like those old like i think they were max i don't even know what they were and they had the big trackball there and you had mm. to like kind of move stuff around and there were math games and things like mm -hmm. that so i i really got into it i enjoyed it i had a friend at the time who actually ended up being like a, a fairly prolific game developer who was like really good mm -hmm. i looked up to him and his dad was in that sort of stuff and i kind of got into the tech side of it music has been part of my life like forever um, I started with like bass and guitar and stuff. I went through like my, my, you know, my long hair phase. Mm -hmm. I was around in the golden age. All right. Yeah. Like the nineties with, you know, um, all the fun rock music and, you know, Nirvana and corn and, nice. and shit like that. Like a little and, emo um, phase there. Yeah. Uh, I, I never really did emo. I did like the whole blue hair thing. I did mm. bleached. Solid. I did long. I did long for a long time. I tell I met a girl who didn't like long hair. Then I shaved <laughs> it's it, like, gone. Yeah. Away. Yeah, yeah, but the stash stayed for a long time. Nice. Um, we'll see how long yours your stays. Yeah, Mine. I know. I know. I got to wait it out. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And and I guess another important question is, uh, what DAW do you use? Uh, I guess at this point, it's like, <laughs> yeah, <be connected. laughs> I, I don't I don't like really use that. Okay, so from the guitar, I went over to synthesizers. I think it was like a Snoop song I heard and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. wait a minute. I'm like, like with MIDI, you have notes and you have sounds. You could swap the sound out because I was always trying to get new sounds out of my guitar. Mm -hmm. I was like one of those guitar pedal kind of guys, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I got into like trackers like back in the day. I can't remember the name of all of them, but they were like really ghetto programs where you could like line by line put in what note and what sound you wanted to kind of get going. And I didn't have any sample packs because they didn't exist or at least I didn't know how to find them. There was no internet. So mm -hmm. I would actually go into the Windows directory and find the Windows sounds. Oh, the and, default and sounds. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, those default sounds and pitch yeah. them up and down and stuff. And I was like, nice, man. That is sick. That's and um, yeah, from there, I went into Reason. Mm -hmm. uh, when Reason came out, like I lost my mind. I had a lot of fun with it, you know, mm -hmm. with the little wires and stuff like that. You could plug in. I thought it was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got seduced into the dark world of uh, VSTs. I started nice. seeing those things kind of pop up everywhere. And I was like, man, I kind of want to try something other than just like the Reason stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I did Ableton for like a little while. But this is such a long time ago, man. Yeah. And then back when tried Ableton FL, looked, uh... and then look the exact same as it does now from all the way from yes. the 90s to now the exact same yes yeah. that's a big point in the conversation that I'll, I'll bring up a little bit later but yes uh, when it looked exactly the same with the same feature set that's what i was using <laughs> and um then eventually i ended up on on uh reaper and the feature mm. that won me over was track comping the fact that i could like mm. have a drum loop going 
and I could just like kind of play. And then I could take my takes and kind of mix them up. I was like, I need Mm. this. And then that was it. And uh, it wasn't, I don't know. It's been like a rocky kind of switch, but it is what it is. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. Now I've I've been on there ever since making music that brings me, (laughs) gets me nowhere. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Story of my life, story of everyone in the chat's life as well. But uh, yeah, no, that's, that's great. And, and looking at sort of your experience with other DAWs and how you decided to kind of tackle making multiplayer workspace for music like this multiplayer daw how did you originally get that idea was that around the time when covid started or was it way before before? way before so i got a okay it's a more quebec kind of stuff i got like a buddy of mine who lives in uh, trois rivières okay which is like this town which is like an hour kind of away um, and he, he's, I've had a few friends. I was involved in like the Quebecois kind of hip hop scene for a little bit. And we used to just kind of go around and jam and do stuff. And it was so much fun. And there's so many times where, you know, I pack all my gear into my car, the synth, you know, the mm. kitchen sink, the, the, the computer, it looks like I'm moving. Right. <laughs> and I finish work and I get stuck in freaking traffic and I drive for hours and I show up there and like, dude, let's jam for the weekend. I'm like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. And I forgot a cable. I can't oh, plug yeah. in. I can't play, you yeah. know? And I was like, man, like, I want to be able to like do this because i've enjoyed those weekends so many weekends of doing that stuff but Mm -hmm. during the week i want to be able to do it and like i just couldn't there was like no solution there's nothing Mm -hmm. and so i was always like man wait there's got to be a way to do this kind of and i've always been into the vsts because i thought they were kind of a cool application of technology Mm -hmm. and i was like man i I, should be like a vst or something a way to do it and it just kind of sat around i talked about it for like a long time and it's really when i got sort of a soul crushing job. And I'm sorry if there's anyone watching this who, who works there, but uh, at CBC, that's your Canada, any government job where, you know, you work with a lot of like pickles mm-hmm. and uh, it just kind of sours you and the pandemic hit and I was stuck at home. I just have to tell you, I had this little office in, in the basement of like this crumbling kind of 70s building. Mm. And if you've ever seen like Arkham Asylum, like you could take mm-hmm. a picture of my office and like a, a screenshot of the game the from there. Blinking light moving, like, and everything. Can't tell yeah. which one is which <laughs> exactly, right? It's it's yellow tinted, but like in real life, that's not like a sepia filter. That's right. just like how it is. Right. That, that's where like it's all the dreams melting there, right? Yeah. Anyway. No, uh, that's... Got stuck at home and then I was mm-hmm. like, it's time to build something, time to make this happen. Nice. And and like, I, I think you've shown me like really early versions of Be Connect. And we'll, of course, like show a few cool new things going on there. But uh, do you have any uh, sort of way back then sort of screenshots of what Be Connect used to look like? Michael, 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 you know, I do. <laughs> you know, I do. Man. It's the I, coy I thing. Digitally scrapbooked a bunch yeah. of crap. Let um, me let me over know the years. Not crap. No, honestly, it's, it's history. Right. So perfect. All right, perfect. You want me to? You're gonna do the whole screen yeah, share thing. Yeah, let me know. I can pop boys. it up whenever. All right, I'll pop it up now. Oh. Okay, if you guys are ready for this, this is the absolute very first design of B Connect I ever did. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Could you zoom in on that a little bit? Jesus yeah. Christ. This is this is this is it. This is the dream. This is where it all started, man. So uh, it's like. You, it's like almost like a Google Drive sort of thing, but with live recording there. Okay, so the important point to note here mm-hmm. is that I knew the problem that I wanted to solve, and I didn't know how to, but I didn't know what the solution was. Mm-hmm. And this has been a, an iteration journey. It's not like the BC you see today is like exactly what I thought up of. It's like far from exactly what I thought up of. So I didn't know. What mm-hmm. I knew is that I wanted to collaborate remotely. I wanted to use my own tools. Like my buddy was on an MPC all the time. And he has logic and i was always on reaper and i had all these weird like uh, vsts and stuff like that and we had another buddy who would just plug in his guitar and he had cubase so i'm like it has mm-hmm. to work for like all of us mm-hmm. and i'm like in my mind i was like i have to be able to see you i have to be able to probably send midi and receive some audio just like mm-hmm. uh, i don't know we probably need to sync our bpm and so i just like threw a bunch of things kind of together mm-hmm. into this and i was like there we go now so, i have a business yeah right? that Stima, is a business I, i've made yeah. it yeah. And could um, you uh, quickly show what B Connect sort of looks like today as well, or at least the multiplayer DAWs? Hang on, man. I'm just gonna. We're not. What? We're skipping the foreplay. It gets. Oh, well, we gotta. Funner. We gotta show and, then, now, and then the journey. See? You know, and it goes there from go. here, and it goes there, and nice. then I was like, "See, this is how this is supposed to work." <laughs> um, and the very, very, very first version I ever got to work looked like this, which is not at all like how I designed. Oh, okay. Yeah. And no this was like a multiplayer sampler. Okay, mm. so it's an instrument where you drop the samples in. Mm-hmm. And then it syncs the samples, and then everyone else could kind of play them. 
so my buddy would do the drum loop in, in an NPC, and then he would drop the drum loop over here, and then I can kind of play it and record it in my DAW. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely terrible. Um, barely worked. Uh, the flow was awful. But you know what? It was the first time I've ever done anything like that. So mm -hmm. that's that's that was that. Mm -hmm. um, and then it started to evolve. You know, uh, the rocket ship is just to show progress. And um, eventually, before we uh, we met uh, Johan, I ended up with something like this. So this was again a VST plugin. This is a super early kind of version of like when we had three people together at the same time, sort of mm -hmm. recording stuff, uh, which took me again forever to do. You can see we got a little chat over here, and uh, I was obsessed. I am obsessed with synthwave. So. <laughs> You have these little triangles in the back, and nice. um, when you hit play, they would move. The mountains yeah. would move. Oh, yeah, you know? there we go. A little car driving so. in the back, like DeLorean or something. I, I wish. my <laughs> my As you could tell, my art skills were not quite uh, not quite there yet. And it was around that time where, like, we, we were doing tests with, like, all these all these um, producers and local people and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. it was getting interest and stuff. And Alex was like, you know, if we're actually going to be sinking money to this, he's like, maybe we can kind of get a designer. Maybe mm -hmm. things can kind of look a little bit better. I was like, well, I don't know. I think it's looking pretty sharp, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, that's where he introduced me to Johan, who's our chief, uh, you know, chief, 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 chief officer. Chief, let's just chief, yeah. say that way. He puts things, uh, puts things into perspective, yeah. makes things nice. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite thing to show because uh, Johan, who uh, hates to show up on camera and, and is an ultra private person. And so uh, I, me being a jerk, I talk about him all the time. Um, he shows up to the meeting and he, the first time I met him, he had designed B Connect already. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I was like, who is this guy? How does he know so much? Mm -hmm. He had designed B Connect. He even designed the flow charts that resembled B Connect and he had branded the arrows so that mm -hmm. they were colored like B Connect stuff. And he came with a logo and everything it was like, holy crap, man, this guy's like so prepared. And what, what really, really made like I believe our partnership work is that I was such like a music tech code like nerd. Like mm -hmm. I didn't care about anything else other than that VST working, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't care how you set it up, how you installed it, how annoying it was to connect with people, nothing. I was like, just let me play, right? I just want to make music. And he was like, yeah, but what happens before you make music and what happens after you make music? I was like, mm. I never thought of that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's how our complementary kind of skill set works because uh, his dad's like a drummer and stuff like that, but he's not a musician himself. He's just worked mm -hmm. in, in experience. And he, he thought about like the whole kind of flow and he really helped me kind of open my mind and, and uh, dream big. And mm -hmm. we fight like cats and dogs, of course, um, because we are it's so often we're like talking about the same thing but facing the opposite direction mm -hmm. right and we're just mm -hmm. like ah! yeah. and then eventually we run out of steam and we face each other and we're like oh shit oh i understand same what you're thing. saying yeah, yeah you're right yeah you know complaining to our wives and girlfriends and that's another story I should talk about <laughs> but, it, but it happens yeah <laughs> and that outside perspective probably helped a lot in shaping a lot of the decisions you were thinking about as someone who was really dug in there oh man it uh totally broadened my mind and I had had like some some inklings of ideas or just like feelings of things I'd wanted to accomplish. And I, I didn't think it was going to be possible. And I saw how things could start to connect. And I suppose that's a pun. Um, and it was good, man. So honestly, it's 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 been good surrounding myself with non musicians. Mm -hmm. Because as you pointed out with Ableton, right, like we, we use these tools that are like, how come I'm like, I'm almost 40 now. Okay. And I used to be a young whippersnapper like you and making beats and, and you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to be the next Dre and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But the tools today are the same tools as they were then. Mm -hmm. It really hasn't changed that much. Even we still say VSTs, right? And they're mm -hmm. still like, you know, uh, the VST standard and, and mm -hmm. it, it, nothing has changed. MIDI itself comes from the 80s. We're still using it. MIDI 2, oh, it's around the corner. Wow. But until then, well, you've got 127 right. values to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't know. Things could be done differently. Things could be done in a better way. And mm -hmm. that's 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 sort of it. Um, a big inspiration, you know, comes from uh, gaming, multiplayer gaming and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right. I know. I know your heart stuck silver or something like that. I know you you, you play League of Legends. You know what I'm talking about, though, where like you just yeah. hit a button and join a lobby. Yeah. And do and stuff. There. Right. Yeah. And, and it before, just works and it looks so good because before before like COVID and remote collaboration and everything, no one blinked an eye at Google Docs. No one blinked an eye at um multiplayer gaming with low latency but then you say collaborative online multiplayer music making and it sounds foreign like it sounds like it shouldn't be able to work but the technology yeah. is out there but no one's just done it correctly yet no no and uh i don't think we did it correctly either at the start like we went through so many versions where like i built something i tried it tried it with people then we're like this is not it 
not it, not mm -hmm. it, not it over and over and over and over again. But um, mm -hmm. I think that's just, it, it's a hard problem to solve, mm -hmm. honestly. And I think a big part of it is, is us musicians being difficult. We all make music so differently. We all have different needs, different wants, different styles and stuff like that. It is very, very difficult to come up with something which is going to work and technologically as well too. Yeah, it's a, it's it's kind of a dirty industry. It's a little bit gross. It's also something which I've remarked on is that the industries which are flourishing like gaming, they're very mm -hmm. concerned about getting new users whereas the industries in music are concerned about keeping their existing users. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a big mindset difference which is why they don't necessarily want to evolve things or change things too much. It's just like let's just you know, we have our little thing and the people who use it, they know how to use it and they know how it is. We'll just kind of add more stuff. But then, mm -hmm. I, like, you've probably opened up Ableton, like, in front of, like, um, people who aren't necessarily musicians or people who might be interested. Then they get mm -hmm. immediately, it's like, like yeah, m way too much. Too yeah. much, right? Yeah. Like, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So I think, you know, there's an opportunity to just do things a little bit better, a little bit differently, mm -hmm. a little bit more modern and just look at what's going on with the rest of the world and, and kind of bring it to music and, and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And yeah, I know that uh, the evolution of how B Connect is evolving is now that we have both. I'll stop sharing the screen for now. Now that we have both a combination of these beat battles as well as these uh, multiplayer DAW sort of things. And I know a lot of the early work was in the DAW, but how did you find going around to the BC battles and all that? When did the team get the notice or start to pay attention to these battles as like a really viable option there? Um, the battles are one of many activities mm -hmm. which are possible. For me, sometimes you want to make music, but you don't know why. Like, you don't always want to be making an album. You don't always want to be, you know, doing something. Sometimes you want a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, again, back to gaming, you could just hit quick play. You know, you could just join an ARAM. Mm -hmm. You could just, you could just do whatever. There is an activity which is available for you to jump in kind of right away. And... You know, for myself and for, you know, a lot of other producers, you can get into a rut sometimes too when you're just kind of doing the same thing or hitting the same keys or there's just something like it's just you're just in a rut, you know, and I think having mm -hmm. activities and, and reasons to make music, reasons to try new things, especially if they're in shorter time frames, so you can kind of like time box yourself be like, yeah, you know what, I got half an hour. Let me just do the sample flip challenge it. or yep. let me just do this or let me do that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome because it gets you to think a little bit differently. You learn a few new techniques and it can help you kind of get out of your rut and grow as a musician, you know, like. Mm -hmm. I feel like with, with production, you're always on this journey, right? And every time you start a beat, it's sometimes it's it's not even to finish the beat. It's just like, I'm just going to work on my EQing. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I don't understand what a low mid is. Let me just like start EQing low mids and see what happens, you know, because mm -hmm. I read about it online and mm -hmm. you know, let me, let, let's just see. So you pick up these little nuggets and these little, little pieces kind of all over the place and you put them together and that gradually helps you kind of grow and gradually, you know, well, at least for myself, you know, it's satisfying when these techniques start to come together. You're listening to your latest track. You're like, oh man, this is good. Mm -hmm. This is so good. And you know, as well as I do too, that like, you never want anyone to listen to your older stuff. You're like, no. oh, your older stuff, yeah. that's trash. Yeah, yeah. That's After the past. Month, that, it's I done. made that last yeah. week and you're still listening yeah. to that? Dude, yeah. Get with the program. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, anyway, to get back to your question, the point is, you know, I think the platform that we're trying to build lets people collaborate, lets people make music. And I think there's many different kinds of activities that we can do. Like mm -hmm. I, I, you know, on stream we're doing, uh sample flip challenges we're doing beat battles you're mm -hmm. doing reviews mm -hmm. there are more things that i think are kind of possible things like you know auditions i think would be freaking awesome mm -hmm. i love the idea that i could just open up my sequencer right and i'm working on something and i'm like you know what i think i need like some piano here my chops are not up to snuff though and mm -hmm. i don't like the samples i got you just highlight it and say looking for pianist and the ping and boom, the sonar yeah. ping goes out into the world and any pianist is like doo -doo 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 -doo. it they can get it immediately open up inside mm -hmm. of, of bc see the song and 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 play their sample yeah you wake up the next morning and you got like four different people who have auditioned for that role and you can kind of flick through them mm -hmm. and hear them in time in the sequencer without mm -hmm. leaving it and you're like oh this one's awesome and then boom you've connected with that person you've made a right. connection maybe you buy the sample maybe you want to work on something different maybe mm -hmm. who knows you know but the point is you've kind of connected with them so um different kinds of activities i think are kind of pivotal to the the bc experience and it just makes sense man yeah I especially like that concept of being able to work with people um, in a way that's not like the traditional experience right now. Because right now it's like you have to hop on Discord and then you need to open your separate DAWs and then you need to use some janky thing in between or like screen share and do something like that. But I know that the, the multiplayer DAW right now has evolved a lot. And I know I keep coming back to it, but I do want to show some people in the chat that may not... Because a lot of people here have only seen the B Connect battles. If you have 
uh, some of the uh, current DAW to to show. I might. Yeah, you might. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, while Nick gets that uh, gets that up, if anyone has any questions in the chat, you can toss them in there, and we will uh, probably look at them. Unless it's like a horrible question. Um, but for example, Kyle says, "Whippersnapper, lol." Mm. I think you said a uh, young whippersnapper. I do quite like being yes. a young whippersnapper. It makes me feel active and not like sitting around. Ah, you'll turn into an old pickle soon enough, man. <laughs> everyone starts as a cucumber. Everyone brines and everyone turns into a pickle, man. It'll happen. <laughs> All right. I will share your screen. That's All right. right. Let me pop this bad okay. boy open. Perfect. So I want to preface this by saying that anything that I'm showing to you guys, I'm actually, this is like, local right like i'm running this i'm not doing multiplayer is what mm -hmm. i'm trying to say i'm showing you a multiplayer dob but i'm in single player mode so i can't show you everything right mm -hmm. like i can't be stealing michael sam samples and winning challenges mm -hmm. with them unfortunately if mm -hmm. it was online we could mm -hmm. uh so this as you'll notice looks does not look like a daw this has mm -hmm. nothing to do with daws right you're like what are these little squares and stuff like that um i want to talk about a word that i hate the word is project i hate the word project mm -hmm. i am like bc aside i'm the laziest person you ever know i don't like projects because project sounds like something i don't want to do it sounds like work mm -hmm. it sounds like something i'm not going to finish it just sounds like something i don't want to do after work and i've always hated that in daws which you have are these projects and another thing that i've always wanted to do is like i, I feel sometimes like i build something so i can use it later I got this loop that I've made because I was tired one night, but it sounds kind of cool. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to remember it. I want to be able to pull this up later on quickly mm -hmm. and do something with it. But then every time I have, I have to like try to go find it and like I name my stuff such random stuff like Monday Blues or mm -hmm. Keys Number Four. And right. then you just run out of stuff. You just start hitting the keyboard. And, you know, once you do this long enough, like even the random things you hit, you've already used before. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, man, this yeah. is so sad. And you can't find J -F -K -L -P or whatever. Yeah. So you sort by most recently. You're like, where are you? You know, and you're right. like, oh man, I used Omnisphere five times in this one. I'm not gonna open that. What if yeah. I'm wrong? I've yeah. spent like five minutes just waiting to hear the wrong thing. You know, yeah. and I hate that. And to me, like music, at least I think what we can accomplish with BC, it's like we could be like chefs, where like everything you do, it's just an ingredient that's at your fingertip, mm -hmm. and every song is just a recipe which is made up of different ingredients. And so the visualization of this came. This is one of Johan's ideas. It really is the grid. Where like, well. What if everything instead of a project is a block? It's a block of music. And just like Legos, you could take a block, you can move it around, you could stack it together, you could use it, you could deconstruct it, you can reconstruct it. And so um, we've actually done that layer. So every like like hex that you see over here is actually a different in DAW speaks um, projects. And if you click on it, it can load up wow. and then you end up right inside of it and you could start making some music. Mm -hmm. Um, this is really tough for me to show again single player. It's really cool when you okay. see everyone else in there. All the cursors moving. Everything is in real time. Uh, the audio is synchronized. You can hook it up to your DAW. You can, I mean, geez, like it won't cook you birthday dinner, but it'll sing you <laughs> like a song. You know, yeah. like it, it does a lot of stuff um, yeah. and it's getting quite sophisticated. Yeah. Uh, it, it's worked mainly with audio, but mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, we are starting to work on MIDI down here as well, too, which is mm -hmm. pretty exciting. And there's a lot of uh, really cool things that we're doing um uh, there's a lot of plugins that are being built um you may have seen the drum machine that i started working on as well too mm -hmm. now for most of you guys you're like okay well i got a daw you know i got a drum machine already and i'm so used to this and so you see that what are you guys kind of doing differently to make this a little bit easier um you may have noticed that it said made with unity before like i was very serious when i said you know a big inspiration from this comes from gaming like not just from the different flows and different cool things and the visuals but also from the technology perspective i want it to look and feel amazing and so uh unity which is like a game engine which is mm -hmm. driving like lots of different things like that's what we decided to work on so um we're actually using pro level sort of audio code to do the audio so mm -hmm. every midi thing that you want to do midi learning um you know arpeggiators all that sort of stuff we have it all and we can offer it, but the visuals of it are going to look freaking stunning because mm -hmm. it's a game engine, right? Yeah. And I don't think any other DAW or music making platform is made in a game engine, right? No. Yeah. No. We're the first. And uh, we've spoken with them at Unity before, too. And, uh, you know, they're they're pretty interested in, in, in what we're doing. And they're hooking us up with some other game companies as well, too. So it's all, it's all very fascinating. 
Um, Unity itself, you know, it's pretty interesting. Something that I like about it is, uh, for those who don't develop, they got something called the Unity Asset Store. So mm -hmm. if you're like a little game dev, you're like, ah, I don't know how to, you know, make wind. You mm -hmm. could go on the Unity Asset Store and pick up stuff that people have done and just plug and play it into your project. They've created an ecosystem where people feed on each other's work and build upon it and grow stuff. And that is so killer for me. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what we're trying to do. Like, we are not building a music making platform. We are building a platform that allows people to build music making tools. You know, mm -hmm. we are building a friggin' framework to have the world kind of plugged into it. Mm -hmm. And everything from open sourcing stuff to making things um, easily accessible, modifiable, shareable, that that's it. Like even this, like I'm missing a little bit here because we're still working on this, guys. This is not going to be a, yeah. I literally built this last week. Yeah. So And everything uh, here really as well is multiplayer. So Yes. Picturing, I think the, the thing that I always tell people is like Google Docs, but it's even more than Google Docs because on Google Docs, you can't see the cursor. You can't drag their text around like easily. It's really like what you want your DAW to be like with someone else working within it. And there are a lot of solutions out there like VST based solutions that just don't have the same level of integration as this because it's sort of working with different DAWs and working with different things at the same time. But I mean... You can see switching back and forth if you would switch back and forth, like being able to hop between projects with your friends and everything. And, uh, you know, the beat battles feels like a very, very small, like tip of the iceberg sort of thing for it. Um, mm -hmm. And and uh, just so the people know when because uh, we're in early access right now, uh, when are we looking to launch some updates? Because this is available right now in a in an earlier version, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, about a month or so. Nice. Give or take. Um, so what's going to come out is a drum machine. This is going to be the drum machine, by the way, the, the killer part, at least to me, is the fact that you could share your kits, right? Mm. So build a kit, save it to your library, then share that kit. So every time you log into BC, you're getting more kits, more samples, more presets. Every VST, including the ones that you already have, infinite presets, because anytime someone comes up with a preset, if they publish it, anyone else can get it, mm. right? Like. Isn't that what you kind of want? Like yeah, I, I do like VST hunting all the time where like I download mm -hmm. this VST and I, I bleed those stock presets dry. But I'm also, I remember, I'm very lazy. So I don't learn how to use the VST. I just go through presets and I tweak them a bit. Mm. And, I, and then I'm like, eh, you know what? Drop another 40 bucks on this other thing, whatever. Or go right. sail the seven seas, you know, for the right. other one. Because I feel like um, a lot of people nowadays, especially with how much they rely on the internet for music production and on the internet are other people, other resources. And people are like digging through Reddit and like other websites in order to find things that should be much more easily accessible between people. And, you know, mm -hmm. they're using platforms like Discord to gather as musicians when it's not actually, music specific, you know? Let me so. see if I can get this working multiplayer here so you guys can actually kind of see how cool sure. it is. Yeah. So we got, we got, We'll call this player one over here. I'm gonna load up player two on my other screen. I'm gonna hop in. Oh wow. Whoop, and we're gonna pretend that we didn't see any little code flashes over there. But there we go. Boom, we yeah, are in. Second player. Jeez. And uh so this is an actual reverb. It is a VST. It just uh we're using sliders right now and like things kind of synchronize, right? So you can kind of move things back and forth. Uh Everything like works, you know, if you want to add more mm -hmm. tracks, you want to do more stuff, it's all it's all there. You could use your own VST if you loaded Valhalla or whatever in there. Like that's also synchronized multiplayer that also has all the presets saved. There's so much, so much cool stuff that's coming out over the mm -hmm. summer that has to do with the musical creation aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've mentioned before that a big challenge for me was actually like building this thing and getting the foundation of it working. And it's so complicated technically to get this working. Um, but we have it now. We have a foundation which works, which means we could build all kinds of really crazy experiences mm -hmm. on it. And um, actually, we have uh, someone in the chat that said they were part of testing this in their beta stage. This is Kuma official. And now they're here to see the evolution of Beat Connect. Shout out to Kuma. Welcome. Nice, man. Yeah. This must That's... be crazy different than what it was like way back pre- uh... Well, Pre it's gone a long way from that little dude that you saw, you know, like the first yeah. little dude the, yeah. in, the, in the white, which, yeah. by the way, I want to turn that into a T-shirt because I, I kind of want to save that. Um, be it. Yeah. So I showed you some of the, 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 the sequencer stuff. You also see here um, these little orange blocks, mm -hmm. uh, which it's not going to look like that at the end of the day. But mm. this is something which is completely different. This is a plugin builder. OK, so what you do over here is you look up any of your plugins. Let me... Uh, 
let's add a, a reverb, let's say. And then it crashes because I'm doing this a is, demo live. Nice. This has gone way further than I remember it last uh, seeing. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, because uh, I'm not 100% prepared, this I wasn't really supposed to demo this. No, um, no. The worries, point is, yeah. you load up your uh, your your plugins in here, and uh, yeah, you could wire them together, and you can create new plugins, and you'll be able to put a faceplate on them. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have people using VC that are gonna create plugins and do all kinds of really interesting things, and then you'll be able to use them and get them to make music with. Uh, so much of the BC experience has relied on using your DAW to kind of transfer sounds back and forth. And I mentioned before that, like, I've always found it a bit clunky. Like, we've made it as easy as we possibly can technologically, but sometimes you mm -hmm. just want to create, right? Like, just like you want to hit a button and make music. Like, I also want BC just, you could just open up and play and make mm -hmm. music. But in order to make music, you don't just need MIDI, you need instruments, you need mm -hmm. stuff, you need things. And there's some people like I know you yourself, Michael, you're a sound designer, mm -hmm. you and LFOs, you get along like pretty well, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. We have a really crazy system that is coming out that's going to let people create face plates, play with LFOs and modifiers and very complicated things to create very simple instruments that sound amazing mm -hmm. and effects that you're going to be able to integrate. And this, of course, leads into the beat battles. Like how cool is it to do a beat battle where a specific VST loads on a specific preset and, and then you get yeah. to, that's what you got to use, yeah, right? Like a, like a preset battle where you just have the same sound and you need to figure out different ways to process it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like there's so much like interesting stuff. There we go. I managed to crash the whole system. Anyway, that's go. all you're going to get for today in terms of, of, of some of these uh, different visuals over here. Yeah. Um, but and, uh, uh, rest assured, fine people, this stuff is, is coming together and it will be available very, very, very mm -hmm. shortly following that. Things like chord generators, pattern generators, arpeggiators. Mm -hmm. And and something which is so important to me is that everything here is shareable, right? Like the point is you mm -hmm. open up VC, you have new chords available that are easily to kind of throw in. You have mm -hmm. new presets to your stuff. You have content, you have ways, inspiration for your music, which I think is is a big shift from having a closed system like a DAW where you're just sort mm -hmm. of seething in your own juices, right? Like right, where, yeah. Feedback. You know, like when you get yourself, to your t-shirt yeah. collection, you know what I mean? It's like every time you open your closet now, <laughs> yeah. new t-shirts. Yeah, that's me with the same four colored T-shirts. Every stream, switch them every uh, every stream and repeat. Um, and you mentioned so with all of this and like the evolution from that first picture to now, I I mean it must have been like an amazing amount of challenges with building something that is multiplayer. If you want to, because I feel like we can't really appreciate the scope of first how hard is it to build a DAW and second how hard is it to make it multiplayer so if you want to comment a oh. little bit on like some of those challenges that you face man it's very 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 difficult um it's funny because today you have things like uh band lab you have you have different kind of tools that are sort of online based that have like quote unquote sort of solved the problem but they don't scratch that itch for me right like for mm -hmm. me i want to use my machine i want it to be a native experience because i want to mm -hmm. use my vsts i want it all i want to hook up my 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 drum machine mm -hmm. i want everything to be like kind of working Mm -hmm. um so it's challenging like um boy i don't even know where to start with this uh even from audio setups can be different like everyone has a different sound card right mm -hmm. so that means we have different sample rates on our machines we have different bit depths on the sounds that we're recording my recording on my machine doesn't sound the same as the recording on your machine mm -hmm. so how do we simplify that and make it easy while still retaining quality not degrading things and making sure everything is still kind of pristine right. all while maintaining little latency between everyone yeah, you know, so some of this resembles gaming architecture in the sense that, like, things are happening at the same time. But there's an additional twist is that sometimes someone's going to drop a 10 gig sample and you got to mm. transfer that. But everything else still has to stay snappy. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through transferring that sample, they say, you know what, I'm going to change block and move around. And right. so, or someone else logs in and everything needs to just work and stay seamless. It's uh, complicated. And then you you throw in additional complications like undo, redo. Right. Uh, which in itself is, is a complicated thing to do with code. But if you try to do it, like imagine you drop a sample and then I hit undo, it could undo your sample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want it to do that. You want each person to have their own like sort of local undo stack. Undo, yeah. But things get sort of weird because I add a track. Mm -hmm. You start recording on that track. I undo. Right. That could delete the track that you're recording on, mm -hmm. right? You end up with these spider's nest, uh, spider's web of just situations and states which mm -hmm. are highly complex. And it's not as simple as a game where you could just like grab someone's state and send it over because sometimes it involves audio or live mm -hmm. recordings. Sometimes you don't want someone to join, someone's recording. 
someone's doing like a, a four minute guitar solo, you know, a la Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want someone joining and putting in a little hiccup of lag and then ruining that solo too, right? Right. right. Fair enough. So, and, so many, mm -hmm. so many technical challenges, every, every aspect of it really. And um, you mentioned that it was originally a VST, but now it seems to be its own standalone. Uh, yes. What, what caused that decision, that sort of change between... The, uh technological yes. barriers man mm -hmm. the DAWs do not play well together they just don't work like you cannot have a vst effect that works as the bridge between DAWs, which is originally what i wanted my intention mm -hmm. was to have bcb just the thinnest layer possible between DAWs. Mm -hmm. it just doesn't work for like a, a whole bunch of different reasons um there's some DAWs that unless that DAW you hit play mm -hmm. they turn off their vsts and they do it to save memory mm -hmm. but when they turn off bc it stops to work in multiplayer Mm. so it just and that's entirely up to the whim of the DAW and I had mm. noticed you know I had spent like a year uh, two years on the VST version the DAWs would change they would just swap something out and then things would break and then mm. I can't fix it because it's it's not up to me when you when you develop a VST you really have like this this child parent kind of relationship this thing where like this is what you're allowed to do but this you are not allowed to do mm. And it just broke the experience over and over and over. And it would just sort of work sometimes under the right conditions. You know, if the moon was shining this way mm -hmm. and you clicked your heel three times, maybe, you know, you can kind of get it to work. But it would just always fall apart. And I was getting frustrated because I couldn't I couldn't make it work. And that's when I was like, you know what? What if BC was still a bridge? Mm -hmm. We took it out of the DAW and we and we did like a different kind of plugin to kind of link things. That mm -hmm. way, if this plugin messes up, you could still hit play in BC. Everything would still work. So that's how we started gravitating towards standalone experience. And we got it to work, you know, and it was awesome. Then it was working in all, you know, Pro Tools, Logic, every every DAW you can kind of think about, even the ones you mm -hmm. don't know about. And um, it was good. But I was still like, man, I just I just want to have fun. I just want to make music. I mm -hmm. feel like when I'm with my friends and we're in the same room, we're just jamming. We're just hitting keys and mm -hmm. doing things. And it just... It just works. I don't have to like alt tab and be like, hang on right, guys, yeah, let me set one? up my recording yeah, device yeah, yeah. for a moment. Uh, yeah. Let me select my input. Okay, yeah. I'm scanning it in now. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like I just I just don't like that. It doesn't feel fun to me. And I'm like, no, I think I think if we have to just kind of bite the bullet and mm -hmm. do our best to build something, which is ultimately you just open it up and you just kind of go. It. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a daunting challenge. You know, sometimes we we have often um, bitten more, uh, bitten off more than we can chew. But we've, I believe over the years, made some wiser technological decisions and product decisions. That are bringing us towards something which is pretty amazing mm -hmm. i mean just the fact that like from april to now we can crank out midi with a ton of plugins and stuff like that right. is crazy and a plugin builder yeah like pretty good for like two months of work from yeah, like a very a that, small team yeah it was just like just a da like just a multiplayer space where you could work with audio to now integrating multiplayer midi and plugins and drum machine and plugin racks and uh i guess what other ideas can you envision connect working with in multiplayer because the plugin rack is an interesting one because it's like a shareable platform right it's not like like you're working with be connect as a place to share samples to place to share drum kits a place to work with you know different people offline and online uh, yes. what's sort of your next vision with how you can enhance this sort of multiplayer experience uh, well, the, the, the grid itself that you saw is very kind of bare bones and there's a lot of organizational things that I want to do to make it easier. Um, I want, like, I've talked about the ingredients part before, right? Where like the things that you've done, these blocks of music, you should be able to easily be able to load them together and, and mix them and match them and stuff like that. I want to be able to treat your blocks like samples and mix and match them. Sometimes I got a drum loop over here and I got this synth loop I did over there. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just want to hear the two together, but I don't want to do that thing where... Have you ever like had like a song in your DW, which has all these automation curves and stuff like that? And you're like, I just want to swap the chorus and, and you know, the hook and the bridge and just mm -hmm. hear what it sounds like. Now you got to line everything up and, oh, mm -hmm. I missed one of these automation points. This is, mm -hmm. uh, let me undo that. Kind of go back mm -hmm. and move. And you're like, this is so annoying. I just want to hear mm -hmm. roughly what these two parts sound like if they're in different spots, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that we can do with the blocks is make it super friggin' easy to sequence your blocks, so mm -hmm. to speak, and make it very, very easy to take these little pieces that you've created and rearrange them in different mm, like ways blocks within blocks sort of yes sort of yes yes and the rabbit hole goes deeper as well too um you may have noticed when i was showing the plugin rack stuff that it said input and output because a plugin rack at the end of the day is like a plugin right so a plugin has an input which is your track and the output mm -hmm. is probably your speakers right mm -hmm. it just that's how the audio flows right um but you can add more 
And the point of adding more is that you could do, you could set up more interesting routings. Something, uh, I, I'm sure you've done it, you're like way more like musical than I am, but um, if you've ever done like vocal recording where like you need to set up a stack mm -hmm. for, you know, like the hook, you know, cause you need the lead singer here, then you need the backup vocals mm -hmm. there and you need two copies that are panned like this mm -hmm. and these two are like this and you wanna be able to play with the EQ and stuff. And this can take like four, five, six tracks, who knows mm -hmm. how many, right? And each of these has specific effects and, and routings and stuff like that. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just need to tweak a few things. But that's your stack, right? It's generally how you proceed when you want to do stuff. All of this can be packaged in a plugin rack mm. so that when you go to add a new track, you're not adding a track, you're just right. adding a template, right? Mm -hmm. You're adding your stack. Well, let me just add my vocal stack and then mm -hmm. shows up. Boom, good to go. Mm -hmm. And for a newcomer to be able to benefit, you know, like I could load Michael's vocal stack and just be ready to record hip hop vocals or record pop vocals or whatever, being able to, it's a way for people to share their knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Like I want to load your setup. You spent a long time crafting your setup. That's valuable. You should be able to package this mm -hmm. in a way that allows me to load it all in one shot and then have a little interface with a couple buttons to play with some simple things. Mm -hmm. If I want to dive into details, I can. If I want to just stay and just use your thing, I can as well too, right? Mm -hmm. We'll have different layers where like you have the simple layer where you can just benefit from this stuff. If you want to go deeper into the synth making, into the the this, the that, whatever, you can because we have those available. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of key to the whole experience. Right. And and I like that idea of being able to share like whole stacks of things with people because nowadays what everyone shares with each other are just like, here are my samples or here are my, mm. I don't know, here's an Ableton project, but guess what? You work in FL Studio, it doesn't work anymore. Um, if I was a creator, for example, and I wanted to make plugins, and I wanted to monetize them. Do you think that's sort of a pathway that B Connect could help out? Oh yeah. Let me let me be clear here. All right. Like you've, you you know that thing with Facebook where they're like, you are the product. Yeah. You are the product. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna come out and say it with BC. This is how it is. This is not a data play. The business model is very simple and it again borrowed from gaming. The whole thing is gonna be free. And then you could pay for stuff if you want to. You could buy things. If someone puts a vocal stack and is selling it for five bucks, it's up to you as a user. If mm -hmm. you see benefit in it, you can pay five bucks and you can get it. That is the thing. That, that's just how we're going to make money. Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense. I think that's what makes it the fairest for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we had actually, it's funny because we had started as like a SaaS service before. Mm -hmm. So like, a, like 10 bucks a month kind of thing. We had huge backlash. And we realized it had nothing. It was so bad for uh, collaboration. Right, because here's this tool, right? Like, imagine, right? I found this cool new tool called B Connect. I'm like, oh man, I want one. Let's use it with Michael. Hey, Michael, and you're like, oh, I'm just a musician. I don't have any money. I'm like, no, pay ten bucks a month. Yeah. We're gonna make some music together. You know, you're kind of forcing people to spend money right before they so yeah. Like, yeah. Oh man. Um. So yeah. So we're like, you know what? Screw it. If you look at Fortnite, if you look at some other platforms, or like the game is the same mm -hmm. for everyone. You could pay for skins or cosmetics that don't affect. You know, it's not play to win. It's, mm -hmm. it's just play to have fun and show off a little bit. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's such a fair business model. And I feel like that applies itself so well to music. If you've put yeah. together this vocal stack, you should be able to sell it for a buck, two bucks, five bucks, whatever right. it is, and someone else can benefit from it. Why mm -hmm. not? You know, and improve on it. And in fact, that's another connection we can make because it's all within the ecosystem. The mm -hmm. person who's purchased it, who's using it, could hit a button and send you a message or ask for your help with something. You could do a battle over just that as a seller as a promotion for your thing and then give it out for free mm -hmm. and you have all these connections between people i think it, it it sort of you know it becomes like this big sandbox kind of bc world where things can mm -hmm. just sort of happen and all we're doing is just providing the connections and, and allowing the human connection of people to happen in between right and and i really like that uh business model because it hasn't really been used currently in the music industry where it's like you know it's free to use, but if you see benefit in it, you're welcome to pay. You're welcome to not pay anything if you would like. And a lot of the free services also come with the asterisks, right? It's like, yeah, we're free for a reason. We're trying to be Ableton, but we know that no one's going to pay that money for us right now. So we're basically locking a bunch of stuff behind us. Or we're browser only. Or we're, you know, you need to give us all your information in order to use this, like your phone number and your dog's name or whatever. Um, but I like that BeConnect is trying something different and opening doors to allowing the users to generate value within be connect itself and just growing by itself. Um, I guess the next thing I sort of wanted to talk to you about is that right now we have this, like we have battles online and then we have 
the DAW offline. Uh, where can you see this bridge in between those two? Is there somewhere that we uh, can... It's gonna, you know, like that yeah. painting where they go like this, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the battles are coming to the dawn, man. I mean, that's just, nice. it's what I find, we, we talked about it, exciting and interesting and in a shorter time frame. I mm -hmm. actually participated in my first battle, as you'll know. I was the first one, yep. first one yeah, to lose the BC that. battle right here, man. I, I used the product. <laughs> and I didn't even get um, fired. Yeah, amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't hire you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to be real, some of the other battles that have come out, I mean, the quality is just like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like. You guys are like nuts, man. Mm -hmm. Like I was not making music like this back mm -hmm. in the day. I may not have been making BC if I was making music like you guys are. But uh, the point is, I'm sort of like, I don't have time to be able to do these crazy beats and submit them, even though it's like a minute long. It is mm -hmm. it is a condensed, it's a reason to make music, mm -hmm. but it's still not small enough for me. Mm -hmm. What I could do, which a lot of people can, you know, like so many musicians who are, you know, they're, they're, they're dads, at least uh, in my generation, they're dads now and... They, you know, they go, they go to work, then they come home, then they fight with their wife, and then they have four beers. Then they're, they're <laughs> like, you know, like, oh man, I got to go back to the factory tomorrow. <laughs> they have like half an hour and like half a brain cell, mm -hmm. and they want to make music, but right. like they're not going to commit, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let's squeeze something in, and I'm like, if we do a challenge where the drum machine loads, and the only thing you can do is play with the drum machine and maybe this and that, mm -hmm. just less choices and it's very specific and your goal is not a song your goal is a four bar loop mm -hmm. your goal is an eight bar loop you know this is something that someone can participate in in a short enough amount of time mm -hmm. and still grow as an artist because you're focusing on one particular technique one thing which can get judged super quickly because mm -hmm. these things don't have to last a long time mm -hmm. and then you could see how someone else did it the person who won you're like what and then you go look, you're like, oh, I see. He reversed the sample here. Then he cut the tail end out. Then he turned that into something else. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought of that. Next time I do a beat, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's this digestible piece of thing where you're still battling people, but you're getting something out of it. And it's a short enough time frame that it's kind of fun. And, and from mm -hmm. a business point of view, product point of view, well, it's kind of cool because you get to play with all these like new toys that are kind of popping up, the new presets, the new stuff that are kind of popping up. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense. Compliments are offering quite well. And that's yeah. where I see the battles and the dog kind of coming that's together. Awesome, and and we have the, the hub currently. And the hub, will that be the home of all of the new sort of things? Because there's like the DAW aspect and then there's the community aspect with these battles. And then there's like like a chat. Yeah, we made things very things. complicated. Mm -hmm. We, <laughs> as I said before, sometimes we are way overly ambitious and we will, mm -hmm. we often set the goalposts mm -hmm. at a certain spot technologically so mm -hmm. that we can have room to kind of fill stuff in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have set the goalposts quite far with all these different things, our web experience, our hub and, you know, this dot. It's like, we are only, mm -hmm. there's like 17 of us in the company or whatever, right? Like there's only so much that we can kind of do um, running around, you know, and trying to code stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the the hub will be like a mix between like Steam and Discord, I guess, mm. but specifically for music and and really, again, to borrow from the gaming experience, you know, Steam, you pop open, you know, you're browsing, you launch your game, boom, you're into it. That's just like the DAW and the hub, right? Mm. In Steam, I'm like, you know what I want to add? Memblem. You hit a button and the overlay comes in. Every game has that Steam overlay that mm -hmm. can pop up that allows you to kind of do stuff, right? We have an overlay via the invite button, but I think we could drive it way further. And the mm. overlay, this is a tech talk, right? Um, the overlay is a web experience. Mm -hmm. What makes this really cool is that we can embed web experiences inside That's of the, the DAW, mm. but like without having to like leave, right? I hate mm. like, if you have this full screen DAW, you're making music, then a friggin' website pops up mm. and there's a pop-up blocker. Like that's so lame and it, it breaks your experience, right? Mm. What I want is like, if there's an invite to go somewhere, there's something which is happening. Just whoosh, this little side panel kind of slides out mm. a little bit of an overlay, maybe one third of the screen and all my stuff is there. My chat is there and the things are kind of there and I could swap things around like, oh, Michael, check out this block of it or do this. Whoosh, I just drag mm. it over and boom, click on it. You're in mm -hmm. or it's shared or a new battle is created right then. Mm -hmm. There is an incredible, incredible kind of fluid connection that we can kind of create by mixing technologies like this. It will mm -hmm. take a little bit of time to get there. But when I say a little bit of time, it's not like a lot. I'm like right. this summer. We're gonna have this mm -hmm. all working like pretty good, I think. Mm -hmm. And that 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 time frame you talked about. So from when when was that original uh, drawn uh, photo back in the day? What do you remember the date on that? Beginning of the pandemic. That's like uh, like April, no March, maybe twenty twenty one or February. I don't remember exactly something, something like, that. like that. Around then. And then from 
then until now it's gone through this massive amount of evolution but now it's like honing in and then in the past three months you've implemented drum machine plugin midi going all towards plugin racks and everything um how do you see the evolution of this as we pick up because it seems like it's ramping up like the speed of the development yes uh, it is it is because we're mastering the technology and we spend a lot of time creating things that are reusable that we can kind of build on top of. That is a big mm -hmm. principle of software engineering, right? You know, write it once, use it multiple times. You build things in specific ways. It has been very hard for us to do it um, given the mix of text that we have and the uniqueness of the product, but we are getting there. Um, the evolution is, is, is putting the steering wheel that we have in the community's hands. Mm -hmm. Like I am building a drum machine right now using the plugin rack module what we're mm. going to do is allow people to use the plugin rack module themselves we're going to offer free stuff we're going to sell stuff too by being a seller on the marketplace and uploading stuff then we're going to give you that as well too the plugins themselves man i believe in the open source community so much in fact we're adding modding to be connect <laughs> you want to have a piano roll that looks like fl so your drums can hit just as hard <laughs> well just and you're a dev, Impossible. no problem, man. Like yeah. we will allow you to create mm -hmm. your own modules and integrate with our technology. Like I want to create a framework. I just would like the doors to open completely. And that's how I think we can actually compete with the giants who don't want anything to change. Sure. I gotta tell you, I've wanted to say this this whole time. My least favorite word is dongle. Dongle <laughs> is the word that represents the music production industry. Okay, dongle, because it is 2023, I still need yeah a usb key which my mac doesn't have in order mm -hmm. to launch software and that represents everything which is wrong with the industry and the mindset i saw this picture and i'm gonna slag off avid for a bit here because yeah, they yeah, make no me really mad. So this picture of avid recently where like mm -hmm. the board of directors were having a dinner in like this 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 black room and they're all wearing black and you see like oh, the geez. flesh of their users kind of on their plates <laughs> it was like a bond villain yeah. thing and i'm like you guys are so Illuminati. out of touch yeah crazy i'm like so out of touch man and i'm like this is not it man L look i think everything is going to come from the ground up right if you look at the movements like twitch mm -hmm. like discord the creator economy all that sort of stuff the world is crumbling around us you know everyone's mm -hmm. trying to do their own and i think we can do a platform where we can allow people to kind of um, benefit and provide so uh yeah. that that's where we're going with that yeah awesome and i mean um We've spent a lot of time talking about B Connect, the de details about the multiplayer DAW, the technology behind it, and sort of the future vision. But about you, I guess one big question is, are you a Windows user or Mac user mainly? What do you say? I am a Windows user, and I was forced to get a Mac in order to develop plugins <laughs> for Logic and GarageBand. And, uh, but I, you know, no hate. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a good little machine, man. It works yeah. pretty good. Fair I much. like it. Um, but I, I can't help going back to windows. You know what? It's the mindset. It's the Mac is a closed system. Whereas mm -hmm. windows, I find it's easier to open stuff up, change things and move things around. And it's, sure. it's, it's, it's something I just believe in and I, I just enjoy. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, you know, I'm a gamer at heart and I just grew up with it. So, oh, nice. Any, any, it is what favorite, it is. any favorite games as of oh. I get, I guess I should maybe favorite games a few years ago before you like went next. Yeah. Yeah. Games. I gotta say these days uh okay so i'm i'm a fan of mods in general mm -hmm. okay and i was a big fan of warcraft 3 because it had the the custom map editor and people started creating stuff mm -hmm. in it right mm -hmm. that's its own like story it's amazing right they they did this game and then blizzard's like oh we'll just let me people make maps and people are like well you know what here's a tower defense map and mm -hmm. that spawned like billions of dollars worth of revenue for that genre mm -hmm. that little thing came out called dota which again mm -hmm. changed gaming forever yeah. and it only happens because they open their door mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so games which have modding in it like I, I became a big fan um i was a big fan of factorio i played rimworld oh, for a little I... bit which i thought was freaking awesome nice i played factorio uh, a little like, a little bit last intense. night i was playing factorio <laughs> Sure. What a game. Nice, man. And again, the modding scene, right? The community, incredible, man. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff they do. I, I love it so much, man. Mm. Uh, and recently, just because I don't have a lot of time, I've been playing a lot of uh, Hearthstone, but Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds mm. being the auto chess version of it. And I think it's, it's, it's such a funny story, again, because Dota spawns League of Legends. And then Dota 2 kind of comes out. And from mm. Dota 2 comes Auto Chess, which is like another mini game, which again becomes huge. You just mm. see this leapfrog of sort there. of innovation. And then Hearthstone, they were like, yeah, you know what? We need our own Auto Chess. And then they created this mode called Battlegrounds. And it's hilarious because you don't need to buy the cards to play. You could just play the game. Mm. And they've created their own problem because there's more people playing Battlegrounds than are playing Hearthstone. And so they keep giving you all these free cards. You're like, yeah. I don't care because 
I'm I don't give that, a shit yeah. about your base game. All I care about is this. Yeah. And they're trying to monetize this thing that everyone loves. It's so funny. Yeah. Uh, love it. Yeah. And so, so would much. you say that you take a lot of inspiration from the video game community for this? Like, would you say even that you're more inspired by the video game community than the DAW community? Oh, yeah. Hugely, man. Like everything they do like i'm just such a fan things like i've talked about how the way unity works you know i love steam the simplification of installing uninstalling finding my friends managing the overlay experience so good multiplayer stuff is so good mm -hmm. um they added cross play you know what they've mm -hmm. solved the dot problem you got an xbox and i got a ps5 no problem mm -hmm. there's cross play now right mm -hmm. like is that not what we're trying to do yeah right like in every single way yeah. um yeah. So yeah, it hugely inspired from it. Even like the 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 battle stuff I was talking about there. Like in in Hearthstone, when you hit play, there's like the little spinner that kind of goes mm. while it's trying to find your opponents, and then mm. kind of stops and it looks like one of that that Price's right wheel. And then it says like, okay, we found a worthy opponent, and you can kind of see the other kind of things. And I don't know, the whole experience. I was like, man, what we got to do? It's got to be called beat roulette, man. Where yeah, you I'm gonna do the battle, and you don't get to pick. It just spins, and you are doing. Boom, yeah. trap and music, just, and it's and using, yeah, doing that. you know, this, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's such a great experience, man. Yeah, that actually so. would be a good, like, stream segment. We, I don't think we can call it Beat Roulette because I think, uh, like, DJ Mag has, like, a <laughs> trademark on that. Oh, <laughs> crap. Man. But we can definitely do something. Maybe, like, Russian Beat Roulette, where if you lose, you're banned. <laughs> You're banned permanently. Wow. And you know, yeah. your account is deleted. Yeah, your account's deleted. It's gone. Yeah. And Everything we'll, is gone. Man. We'll have the ultimate Beat Connect user at the end there. And then, uh, yeah, and then we're going to sue him, just like every other company. Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, now that we're wrapping it up, I guess we can open the floor to any questions. Uh, thank you guys for uh, joining us. We have a few new users in here. Shout out to Off the Six, who is. Uh, in Canada, I always shout out the Canadian people. <laughs> it's just oh, yeah. that's just our only relation as uh, Canadians here. We're like, yay, we're also from Canada. Um, but I guess, um, do you think a hot dog is a sandwich? Oh man, <laughs> the hardest question of the I day. Know. A hot dog is like a a hug for a sausage. It's a hug. It's not a sandwich. I like that. Usually people yeah. are like, people are like, oh yeah, a hot dog's a sandwich. A hot dog's not a sandwich. But I like the idea that it's a hug for a sandwich. So, so is a burger a sandwich? Oh man. Um. It's yeah. It's less huggy. It, yeah. It's like it's like so. So then, Soft where's the egg. line where if I take a hot dog bun and I put like a piece of beef in it? Like the Did you grill beef. the beef? Yeah, yeah, like a burger. And maybe I cut it so it looks more like a hot dog, but I put it in there. So it's the same thing. I feel like it's the grilling, right? Like the grilling kind of makes a difference. It's what you do That's inside. True. Maybe it's like that, that flap that breaks it, you know, like because a hot dog has a flap. So it feels like not not like it's it's more like a, you know, it doesn't really work out. Yeah, it's a bit different. Yeah, I agree. I must admit, I haven't spent too much time thinking about it, but I'll, I'll follow your <laughs> lead on this one. Way too much time. Here we I go. See that. Community, Positions, man. community question from Naptis. What's your take on Hawaiian pizzas? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, I want to let you know what a pizza is a framework for people to build upon. Okay, <laughs> and who am I to say what what the creators do? The pizza um, is I'm glad that the pizza exists because it allows people to create Hawaiian pizzas and some people enjoy that. So I'm all about the flow yeah. as to whether I enjoy Hawaiian pizza. I'm kind of a purist, man. Like, I'm just like, I'm very much a pepperoni and cheese guy. Fair. And uh, and that's it. Yeah. Um, but I could be, I could be, you know, convinced. Yeah. I like It's up that. to the execution as well, too. Not all pizzas are created equal. That's, that's very true. I mean, a good Hawaiian pizza is better than a really, really, really bad margarita pizza. Um. But also, I like that that uh, that um, the pizza is the framework that people can create on. Are we gonna have a marketing push where B Connect and pizza are somehow related to each other, just to you know bring in the audience? Oh, we could. You know all the stupid ideas for marketing. Like we have, we have so many. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've explored them all yet. Yeah. I mean, uh, one we, of them we is could definitely do that. Pizza is a framework. I was yeah. really into the idea of Beats Without Borders as well, too. I think that's a pretty good little slogan. Beats Without Beats Borders. Stuff. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We go to uh, we go to Windsor and uh, 
bring them out of Windsor through beats, save their lives or anything. Yeah. Can't spell Windsor without wind, though, man. That's <laughs> true. Um, yeah, but I think uh, we had a nice chat. Slice Is there it. anything you wanted to uh, touch on before we finished up? Oh, man, I just want to, you know, thank my family and thank God and thank uh, thank you. No, I got, I got, I got not much else to say, man. I, I spew the same BS every day. This is another platform. I, I live and breathe this stuff, you know, as, mm -hmm. as you guys can maybe tell. This is all I do and all I think about at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and um... It's, it's pretty cool. And I love the community and I love the people. Everyone hop on Discord, chat with me, tell me things, share some stuff, and uh, let's go. Let's go yeah. get them, man. Yeah, and if you're in the Discord and you're using B Connect and you have any tech issues and you post it in there, no other company has the chief tech officer answering the questions directly at 3 No, no, no. I'm happy to be there to ignore the questions so that our support <laughs> staff that we pay can also answer them because I'm a very, very busy individual. Yeah. But uh, I am there and I do listen yeah. and I pay attention, you know, and suggestions, okay. I take them all. And uh, I, I just, I know what we release is like this kind of curious invention mm -hmm. you know but now that we oh man i screwed up the quote you know what i'm talking about the leonardo dicaprio one mm -hmm. point is we're gonna release something pretty cool so i hope you guys try it out and uh you know give some feedback yeah thank you for joining us everyone uh i hope you have a good day we're gonna be live again tomorrow and uh you know beat connect is out there it's available right now if you want to go and try it we don't just run beat battles we also have as sebastian polychronopolis says Wait, bro, BC Beat Machine. That's maybe we should call it the BC Beat Machine. It is called the Beat Machine at the moment. I didn't ask for approval for this. I just put it there and now it's on stream, so it might become official. <laughs> but uh, we'll machine. see. We did say we want the community to name the the DA eventually. So maybe it's that. That's yeah. true. I because we started saying like I don't even like the word DA. Like it just sounds stupid. DA. You know, Duh. my DA. <laughs> and it's just like a digital audio workstation it's still like yeah. unsexy and, and unfun i'm like there's got to be there's got to be yeah. like a better word to describe some of the stuff and then you guys started saying mda and i'm just like oh <laughs> sounds like mbop you know and like just, i can't get behind yeah. this we need to we need to somehow relate it to like ska like ska something ska D workstation is a weird word for me like i don't have a workstation for anything Why, else like, really are you doing work like do you want to work is that what you want to do the do digital the audio to work at? fun isn't station. the whole point of doing music to avoid it yeah maybe like uh the daf the digital audio fun fun zone the, the davs <laughs> the davs sold man i'm in <laughs> all right thank you everyone for joining us we'll see you tomorrow i hope everyone has a good day and uh thanks nick for joining us today Cool. For sure, man. Thank All you right. for having me. Peace, everyone. See you tomorrow.